Good morning, everyone. Wow. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Hi. It's not a good morning for, any, for everybody here, probably. <laughs> nah. right. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Good morning afternoon for, for a lot of you. <laughs> Evening, morning, mm-hmm. noon, actually, for some. It's 6 p.m. for me. I mean, for me too. <laughs> oh, yeah? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we got a lot of people from Europe, I think. Or um, maybe South Africa, too. All right. So it, look, it looks like a lot of people yeah. want to know how to teach in Playground. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like it. Welcome, everybody. Nice. I'm a little bit jet lagged. I landed this morning in Paris. So wow. sorry That's for. My lack of energy. <laughs> okay, I'm here. I'm here to raise the energy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Where did you fly from? Uh, I was uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, right, oh, right, right okay. near I me. I love North Carolina. <laughs> Next time, come visit me. <laughs> who, who is speaking? Me. Rita. Rita. Yeah. Sounds good. Be careful. I may show up. That's fine. We'll take you up on it. Yeah, this is being recorded, so I can show you. Uh, you invited me, remember? Yeah. <laughs> he he won't come because I invited him to Thailand, and he didn't come. So. Oh well. well He'll get well, there eventually. <laughs> I might have a better chance since he's comes to the U.S. Right, Zayd? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Italian. I'll feed you. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, I'm is jealous. Too. <laughs> come too, Ben. <laughs> Joe, you you still you're still in the US though right now, right? Me. Not, you, yeah, Joy, you're you're not in Thailand right now. Yes, yeah, yeah. sadly, but I am in North Carolina, so you're oh, welcome yeah, to come cool. here too. <laughs> nice, nice. <clears throat> and the pen here as well. It's lovely here. Where, where did you say you were? Kenya. Kenya. Oh wow, nice. On, on the Indian Ocean. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Great. Right. So yeah, welcome everybody. We are going to do a slightly different approach than usual. It's not going to be a monologue by Ben or me. We're going to let teachers. Uh, Erica is requesting to record this meeting locally. Go for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. So we have asked um, Wendy, Diana, and Emily to show us how they teach in Playground. Unfortunately, Emily's kids have the stomach flu and she caught it oh. well. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, no. So oh, Emily, shoot. she was really looking forward to joining this. So Emily, we miss you, but get better mm-hmm. and we'll do this another time. We'll do a second round and you'll be there. Um, and that's it. So I think, Wendy, are you here with us? I am assuming I'm the only Wendy. I'm here. <laughs> oh, Wendy oh, sorry. Sweeney. Yeah, Wendy Sweeney. Sorry, should have sorry. clarified. Good. I'm. I'm glad it's not me. I don't want to see it. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, you Wendy. Ben, did you want to say any anything to uh, as an introduction before we let Wendy share her screen? I mean, yeah, very quickly. I'm, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of interest for this, and I'm also kind of curious. If you want to kind of type in the chat um, what you are interested in specifically, what what part of like why why are you interested in teaching playground and what is it that's sort of drawing you to it? I'm curious. You can type just a few words. I'd be very curious. Uh, and then I'll let Wendy talk. Sorry, because <laughs> like I want to make sure that I direct um, the later part of this webinar towards answering the questions. We have some people saying it keeps the students active. Yep. Yeah. So feel free to just, there we go. It's coming. It's coming in. <laughs> I teach children on the spectrum. And I find that it keeps their attention. Yep. Um, teacher Debbie is interested in how to control it. Katie, writing, reading, and phonics. Lessons to keep interest and active. Okay. Interested in playground as a way to engage my younger students. Lots of ADHD kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking for ideas to keep students engaged, add more fun to lessons, uh, how to use it to keep kids interested, 
interactive fun. I'm I'm starting to have older students, and I think playground will keep them engaged. Yep. Uh, writing and reading activities that are interesting. Okay, yeah, this is all good stuff. ESL friendly, adding interest to the lessons, engagement and joy from the kids. Yeah, a lot of it seems to be driven um, around the the theme of like I want to make my kids happy. It sounds like I want I really want <laughs> my kids to be engaged and and bring joy to their to their lessons. So my, I, I wonder if that also kind of stems from like the traditional tools that we all use, like Zoom or whatever. Um, in the past, like I wonder if those are just not engaging enough or it's much, much harder to get their attention on those tools. Um, so we have to maximize the playground. Okay, how to maintain control, not let it distract too much. See, that's, a, that's a big uh, point about I think a point of concern for people that get started in playground is like, how do I, how do I make sure this is not a distraction? How do I make sure this is I can make a lesson out of this and not it going in all all sorts of directions? We do have lots of tools for that now. Um, uh, will there be text boxes available? Good question. I want the kids to explore the English language with me. All great stuff. I I really appreciate all of your uh, of your of your input here. Uh, I'll keep reading the ones that I haven't read. And in the meantime, I'll, I'll uh, let Wendy take over. Okay, so I came at this because I knew Emily was one of the other people. I, um, I took the approach of going with older students instead of younger students. Um, okay, so here's my classroom. Okay. And I put my link in the chat box so I'd like for um, one or two people to join me as students. So could I get a couple volunteers for that? I'll just take the first, I'll just take the first two people who like pop in. So uh, it's, at the, it's at the very top of the chat. I just wanna say, Wendy, that um, in my experience, it can get a little bit chaotic. So okay. Because you're gonna get a lot of requests. So oh, I, gotcha. Okay. I, I, for now, I, I would keep it just one person. Um, okay. I don't know what you think of about this. Um, um, okay, so Lisa. You, one person. Uh, up, up Lisa you, Holsinger, are you in here? Yes. Can you hop in? Because I know you have the link. No, you do. You probably do want to show what it looks like as a student and how to manage the student. So that makes sense. Okay, there you go. Okay. I can hear you. Can everybody else hear Lisa? No. I think she's muted on Zoom. That's why we can't hear her. So Lisa, if you could mute yourself in Koala. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Mute on Koala. Yes. And make sure you both mute yourself in Koala. That's right. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Yep. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Okay. All right. Great. I need to get my do I need my camera? I'm trying to figure out how to get Zoom as small. The There we go. Okay, so I'm not looking at everybody. There we go. Okay, so um, I would start out by telling my students that we have a special playground activity for today. So Lisa, we have a special playground activity for today, and we're going to hop in right away. But when I tell you, I, and you can explore a little bit, but when I say it's time to start, I want us to go straight to this gazebo. So this is a gazebo. So we'll okay. go straight there when it's time to start. So Lisa, what did you do this weekend? I took care of cats, <laughs> my daughter's cats actually. <laughs> I guess that's not something a child might do, but yeah, I took care of my daughter's cats, <laughs> cat set. So great. So Lisa, can you walk around a little bit and tell me what you see? I see some pink trees. Wow. This is awesome. What season do you think the trees are from, Lisa? Um, spring. Yeah, great. Spring. Good job. Oh, I see a bench. Good, that's a bench, good. And what do you see on the big black board? 
I don't know. What is this? I don't do know what this the, is. Do you see this animal right here? The animal right here? No. You don't see an animal I right there? do not see an animal right there. <laughs> okay. Lisa, are you pretending to be a difficult student? <laughs> no, I am not pretending to be a difficult student. Okay. Um, like, I don't see anybody it. I see, else. I see the tadpoles. Right I see these. This is what I was saying. I didn't okay. know. Okay. Great. Like, could right. you demonstrate focus view at this point if a student has I trouble? could demonstrate focus view at this point. So this is but right here. I would not actually be focusing at this point because I just wanted her to kind of walk around and experience the park a little bit. So let's head back over to the gazebo, Lisa. Uh, Wendy, when you when you show the focus point, would you the focus yes. the focus tool, sorry, do you mind showing very slowly how this works? Oh, okay, sure. Thank so you. let's go up into the gazebo because that's okay. where I want to show it first. Should I walk inside? Yes, please hop right up in there. You have to use the jump bar. Uh -oh. Okay, so today we're going to learn about the life cycle of a frog, the life cycle of a frog. So Lisa, we're going to start by looking right here. So what I'll do is I click this um, button with the four corners of a square, and then this pops up over top of it, this little hazy um, rectangle. And I can click on that and you'll notice um, that it shows us the thing that I wanted to focus on. And it gives us the two, two blocks in front of that thing. And I can manipulate that by zooming in and out. And I can go up and down and side to side using this circle right here. So I can pan left and pan right. All right, so Lisa, what do you see right here? Eggs. Eggs. Are they frog? Are they they eggs are frog, frog eggs. What colors do you see, Lisa? Green and black and white. And do you see a color right here? What color is that? I don't see that one. You don't see this one right here? I don't see this one. Does anyone else? Okay, there's blue eggs there. <laughs> All right. So, Lisa, what do you see here? What does this say? Tadpoles. Tadpoles. How many tadpoles do you see? Two tadpoles. Two tadpoles. Okay. And what do you see here, Lisa? I see. I see a frog. I don't okay. see anything else but one frog. You only see one frog. Is it is it possible that your um, zoom is covering or that your window is zoomed in or something, Lisa? I ha I am full screen right now with. Mm. um what I'm into I don't see any anything else I don't yeah okay, could it be so, that could it be that Wendy's is too folk or too big maybe does, no, she, what she, are she, what she is everyone know. else seeing is everyone else seeing too far I, yeah, I see everything yeah okay I see and then the adult, <laughs> and you and do you see the adult frogs yeah we're seeing it yes. we're seeing everything yeah. there. okay good okay so so we'll just I'm leave that the way I'll, I'll unfocus. I'm sorry. All right, it's okay. <laughs> Lisa, I'm just going to abandon you mid-lesson here so that everybody <laughs> else can different... see what we would do. Now, Lisa, it's are, you, are you on an iPad by any chance? No, no I'm on a PC. Okay. I, I was thinking maybe the graphics card too, but I don't know. That's interesting. Okay. So here I'm going to go back into focus mode and I would have my student label the different um, stages of the life okay. cycle. So these so I can say? move. Eggs. Yes. Tadpoles. Oh, okay, this, so you see wait, that. Where are the tadpoles? Here. The okay. tadpoles right underneath the egg. There. And froglets. Yes, right there. And adult frogs. Good. Okay. So now I have that in focus mode, just so everyone understands that. I could have up to three students in here. 
all labeling because I have three different photos with the, that show the life cycle in different ways. So depending on the age of the student or the number of students, I might use one or all three of those. And then we'll move on to our next spot. So this is called Frog Spawn Pond. And here in front of the pond, I have, um, I have these two little fence pieces where I use focus mode and I go in really close and the students can read these to explain um, what they're seeing in this pond. Now, I have these four stickies down at the bottom and I can unlock those and move them to help the students see where their spot where they're reading. But I can also then write on there if a student is having a difficult time and we can decode a word or I can make a note about words they're having difficulty with. And then I set them free to explore the pond. So I ask them to look from the top down first. What do you see? Okay. And describe what they're seeing. So Lisa, what are you seeing? I see different ponds and trees. Okay. And, and if you come right oh, over there's to a, this pond. A waterfall. Yes, good. Now, if you come over to this pond, what do you see when you look into it? And we just would have read about the egg stage. What do I see? Well, I see it looks like flowers and some plants. Great. Okay, so let's jump in. Let's go over to the end and let's jump into the pond. And now what can you see? Here? Should I jump here? Sure, jump oh. anywhere. Just jump on fish. in. Fish. I see fish. Oh wait, <laughs> there's a frog. The I'm in the wrong pond. <laughs> oh no. Okay. I am so in the my little student. Chinese students didn't have a problem with this, but all right, what everybody else is seeing, because they're not seeing Lisa's view, is you're going to go into this frog spawn pond, and you really can go in from anywhere. And then I let them explore Sorry. and tell me what they're seeing and what color okay, here eggs we go. they're seeing. Okay. There we are. Okay. Now so, I see. Okay. Okay. So you see the different eggs and the different plants. Yes. And then there we'll hop out eggs. of this. And we go to the next one. And so here I would use the focus mode again. So even in the ponds, you can use the focus mode. So if my student didn't jump right into that pond, I would probably jump right to focus mode so that they could see what I wanted them to see in the pond. So Wendy, if I may interject, sorry. Please. I think it's not clear. I, I'm, I'm putting myself in the shoe if somebody doesn't understand like necessarily what focus mode does. And okay. looking at the screen, I didn't see much of a difference from before you focused on this and after you focused on that. You know, okay. so so maybe you can explain. Okay, I can what explain it what it what it. Yeah. Do you want me to okay. run to a different part? Does yeah, maybe Lisa, you can pretend to be distracted. <laughs> can you see what Lisa's doing? No, we can't. But you can oh, okay. see her oh, avatar running so, in the background. So the Lisa's background. off in a different pond, and I want her to start reading about tadpoles. And this is our tadpole pond, and this arch right here is where, what I want her to read. So I'm going to click again on this focus tool and then you'll see that rectangle that's moving. And if I put my cursor right on what I want her to read, that rectangle will go right there. And then when I click on that, even though the arch is at an angle, it'll immediately pop it so that it's straight on and then I can use the plus for zooming in, the minus for zooming out. So I'll zoom right in so that she's able to read that easily. So just to be clear, I really want to emphasize this point. When Wendy focuses on this sticky note, when she clicks the focus tool and then clicks on the sticky note, you saw that it takes her view and locks it onto that sticky note. But most importantly, it takes the student's view and locks in the sticky note as well. 
So the student is always guaranteed to see what she sees when they're in focus view. So it takes right. them out of whatever they're doing, if they're playing, messing around, whatever, uh, and puts them right in front of that sticky note. And there's no way for them to leave. You're there's no control. way for them to leave. My favorite okay. quote one day was, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. <laughs> because I made it go into focus mode and my student had to look at what I wanted him to look at. So, and again, I put these little stickies down at the bottom of the arch and I have them locked there so I can unlock them and I can move them to help my student read or to take notes on. So I find that very helpful um, in the playground. So put that back uh, into place. Wendy, is it okay if we take a few questions? I see, I Absolutely. see a bunch Absolutely, go for it. Questions in the chat. And you guys feel free to ask more if you need to. Um, okay, so let me, let me scroll back up a little bit because there's a few here. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, that is where the focus button helps. That's right. How did you make all these gazebos and trees, Claire asks? Okay. So the gazebo I purchased, it is in the Chinese New Year section of the um, little mark. What's well, not the marketplace, but okay. So you go to this button right here. The button is the box with the blocks and the A and the lamp and the chair. And then you go to home and decor. And then you would go to Chinese New Year. And the gazebo is all the way down at the bottom. In this playground, you'll see the gazebo, the arch, the market I just took out, but it's going to go back in there. You'll see the bridge. It goes over one of the ponds. You'll mm -hmm. also see these fence pieces. And I have lanterns. And I, that's, that's it for this one. So that mm -hmm. is how I did the arch. Now, to get this sticky in the arch, I went to teaching. Mm -hmm. And then you click on the sticky note. It pops up a sticky note. You put that where you want it. So to get it onto the arch there, I popped it up here. Then I wrote what I wanted it to say. And then I went over here. I say, have it highlighted. I go over here to size and I made it huge. Mm -hmm. Pulled it to where I wanted it to be. And then I made it small to where to the exact size I wanted. And I wanted to be able to see through the arch, but to have it take most of the space so it's easy to read. Okay, okay. so I, yeah, and I get that now I didn't realize I can purchase those with my gems. Yes, you can nice. purchase those with I your gems. Knew that. I just thought yes. I had gems and I didn't know what to do with them. Great, thank you. Oh, that's what you do with your gems. There are many things in here okay. to do with the gems. So you see there are different categories, space, Easter, school, house. So the, the home objects in Easter, the one like the bed and chairs and things are also in the house tab. So you can easily find things that way. Um, and wherever you grab the sticky or whatever the object is, when you go to place it somewhere else, you want to pay attention to how you're holding where your cursor is on that sticky note. So here you'll see the cursor is at the very top of the green sticky note. So when I move it, that's where it's going to go. Now, if I move it off of this white sticky, see how it changes direction even? So it's on the ground. So pay attention to where you have the cursor and to what what you're placing that sticky or image or anything else onto. Okay. Were there any other questions? Uh, there's a few. Um, and I just want to make sure that we, uh, at, at 30, we give um, give the hand to Dina. So I, I want to make sure we answer all the questions here. Are there templates for this kind of stuff? And how long did it take you? Impressive, Virginia says. So I've worked on this off and on for a couple of weeks, mostly off. Um, I had a student who found tadpoles and 
she um, wanted to learn more about the life cycle of a frog. And I started doing this and I was just having way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I do intend, um, I do intend to make it a template for a spring playground that I'll use mm. for other subjects as well, so. And maybe to answer the first part of the question, Virginia, there is, we, we do have a marketplace of templates and a lot of talented teachers like Wendy have, you know, create stuff and make it available for everybody. I can show this at the, at the end of the, or after we're done with uh, the, uh, the demonstrations here. Um, yeah. Remind so me leave focus mode. You're going to want to click this button with the man walking and it restores their ability to walk around. So was there another question, Ben? Oh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm reading through them. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I wonder if it has anything to do with having Zoom. Oh, yeah, yeah, She said, I think Katie's talking about the issue that Lisa couldn't see for some reason. Um, okay. I'll have to look into that. How do you bring these text box into the playground? So Patty, I think Wendy showed okay. that. I don't know if you need another demo of that, Patty. Let us know. Okay, so the way that this is not, this is a sticky note. And then on the sticky note, I put text. I did that using Canva. So I wrote up the text in Canva and then I exported it as a PNG. And then I placed it there as I put it into the images. So when you go to that button with the box and the block and the letter, that brings you back to here. And this image library is where you can load your own images in and then be able to use those images in your playground. So that's yeah, so basically, how I did that text box. And I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought she was talking about sticky notes. So that, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah, it's the text that, box is on top of the giant sticky note. Yep. And that's also so it's basically how I an image. did all of the different images in here. Awesome. Good morning. Um, I just want to read, how, how can you make a copy of this template for another lesson? I think Kitty answered, thank you for answering the question for Giselle okay. here. After you buy the lesson, you can make a copy and change it to what you need to be. So when you grab a template for the marketplace, and I'll show that after, uh, it's then yours. You can do whatever you want. You can copy it as many times as you want for each of your students, for example. So I'll, I'll show that. Um, a lot of questions around it being a template. I think, Wendy, you should publish this thing. <laughs> Uh, I'm publishing it by the end of the weekend. I'm working oh, great, on, great. so okay. I'll take you through because I only have a couple more minutes. Um, yeah. I'll take just it. take you through. So this is the beginning of the froglet stage. And then here I have the more, um, more developed froglets that are actually jumping. So the kids love walking through the jumping froglets. And then here's the adult frog stage. Um, and then I have this pond as well. And so they can, they can jump into most of the ponds that I made. Um, and there are extra signs in the playground where I have information about the different plants that are in the ponds. So they can read the information about the plants like here, and then they can find that plant. Um, and then over here, I have some blackboards where I would take them and we would do some activities with the things that we learned to check for their comprehension, but also to practice. This particular student was practicing before and after. So we did that. And she is also practicing when to use was versus what were. So we practiced that. And then here I have, um, and this is where focus mode is really cool. So I can go right here and click the focus mode, go on that, and then I can back way out. So here the student is actually gonna put together a presentation board type of activity. So they'll put these words where they would go and then move the pictures to go with the correct stage. Um, and then this is a story about the frog telling the story of his life. And so those would need to be put on the correct page as well. So that really checks their comprehension and gives them a different way to learn. And then 
back here, I have, I'm, I'm making a game um, where you'll walk through the, the life cycle of a frog. So um, if there are any more questions, I can, I can answer them in the chat while Deanna gets going. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wendy. This was great. Thank and again, you. Thank congratulations you. on this amazing playground. Thanks for giving playground. me the time to do it. It was really fun. <laughs> Love the pun. Uh, it's a super it's cute so yeah, The pun is so fun. Yeah. So creative. It's great okay. stuff. Thank so you. can somebody just from, oh, stop share. I found it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I haven't used <laughs> Zoom in so long because I love Koala Go. <laughs> so. Awesome. Thanks, oh. Lisa. Yo, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Deanna, you, you ready to share your screen also? Sure. Awesome. It has been a while since I've used Zoom also, so <laughs> I might not be able to navigate it as well. You're really, um, you're really <clears throat> forgiven for not knowing the, the Zoom. <laughs> really yeah. Yeah. I used to use Zoom to tutor with, and uh, I love Koala Go um, even more, so, or a lot more. So, so let me just um, go ahead and share my screen. I'm, I'm not sure why, but some of the time it's uh, showing my my playground uh, in there and sometimes it's not. So hopefully it will right now. <laughs> but I wanted to uh, say, first of all, so a lot of us tutors work with young children and there's a million ideas of uh, things that you can do in Koala Go to teach kids, um, especially young kids, but older kids I've found it's, you know, it can be a little bit more challenging to come up with ideas and things. Can you guys see that? Where it says, yeah, Dylan. we can see it. We can see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, it wasn't letting me walk for a second. So, okay, here we go. So, um, this is in Emily's Koala Zone. I think it's Koala Zone 2020 or something like that playground that I bought. And um, she had a really long walkway in here that I just used to make a game board. So, I put all the little colored squares on the bottom. And I am working with my student on reading comprehension and the passage was about chess. So I just uh, got some chess images from Daily Art Hub and put those all along the path and everything. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to teach him was to read the questions first before reading the passage because so many students, um, when they're doing reading comprehension, they read the passage and then they go to the questions, they've forgotten, so much of the passage and you have to go back and forth afterwards anyway after reading it but if they read the questions first they kind of know what to look for as they're reading so as we roll the dice and if you haven't seen that um, up at the top left when you hit invite student and then it shows it'll show um i can't remember what it says exactly right there but um reward but basically, and then dice yeah so it gives you the dice option so that you can just click on, take turns clicking on the dice. And um, if he lands on a square that is next to one of the questions, then he has to read the question. And so we go along here and read all the questions. And, sorry to interrupt uh -huh. again, <laughs> I keep interrupting. It's okay. Uh, you can actually probably click on invite student if you want people to see the, um, the game die. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't okay. sure if it was gonna, okay. I'm just gonna close that. Okay, yeah, so up here where it says reward at the top left, you would click on that and then down here it gives you the option of the dice and then you just click on that to roll the dice, okay? Gives you random results. <laughs> Although my students always win, so I think it's geared for that, <laughs> set up for that or something. <laughs> so as we go along, um, then we get to the next step where I'm talking about looking for keywords as he begins reading. And then we have, this is the first part of the passage. So he reads that. And as we read, if he remembers something from a question, he goes back and answers that question and then comes back to the space he's on. So as we go through the whole game, um, he's, you know, reading this passage. He does not like to read. He's told me that, him, you know, <laughs> himself. Um, and so this is a way that that he doesn't mind doing it because he's playing a game and he's actually playing it to win something. So when he gets to the end here, if he gets there before I do, then he gets to get 40 gems. 
um, as his reward. So he really enjoys playing it, you know, and that's, that's the thing I found even when before Koala Go was that, you know, when you're on Zoom or anything else, in order to keep the kids attention, because of course they, like he said, don't want to go to school and then come home and have to do a whole bunch more work, right? Um, so in order to keep their attention, I was already using games, you know, education games from education.com um, to, to tutor. And so really this is just kind of this, the same kind of thing. It's just that it's in a 3D world, which is awesome. Um, okay, I'm trying to get to my other, let me go to and, stop share. Uh -huh. Oh, Deanna, I was going to say, can you close that little notification that's, that says that your camera is being used by Zoom? Mm, you in, know where that at is? The top right, <laughs> at, the very, at the top right in Playground. Oh, okay, yeah. That yellow thing, <laughs> there you go. Oh, in Playground, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, there we go, yep. Okay, so I'm just coming back here so that it will hopefully let me share the other well I'll go ahead and close this one because I want to share a different playground here real quick okay so this one um is actually a playground that I made um it is an aquarium and castle and uh so if you go if we go through the shark tunnel here <laughs> um to get to where I want to show you I actually have um a board here with with reading comprehension as well um, just has information about the different sharks and then a list of questions that you ask them but um but here's what i want to show you so this one really any of the activities can be geared for any age um you might have to make a few changes sometimes from you know whatever the person who built the playground did but it's pretty simple i think in most cases and <laughs> So for example, on this one, um, they just pick up a page here and read it. And if you have students that are too young to read, you can just read it to them and then ask them the questions. And you can still have them, you know, take it over like, so this one is about clownfish. So I have them after they read it, they take it over and put it on the picture of the clownfish just because they like, you know, having things to do like that. And um, so you could still, even with the youngest kids, read it to them, have them take it to the right picture and put it there and ask them the questions. Um, if you're working with, you know, a lot older kids, you can, you know, make make these even write these so that they're they're more difficult and more detailed uh, about each of the animals. So let me just back up here a little bit. Okay. And uh, and so we've shown you here today a lot of uh, a lot of reading um, and reading comprehension type of things. But if you watch uh, Emily, is it Radecki? I'm not sure how you say her last name, <laughs> but um, I think it's correct. Has, okay, <laughs> so Emily Radecki, she has a, a lot of videos on YouTube, and she shows you know, all sorts of ways for teaching things like ESL because she's an ESL teacher. So a lot of activities that you can do that aren't just reading comprehension. Um, I also do math with my middle school student. And it's funny because um, he just came up with a, an activity that we've been doing where we just we just did a, a blank playground. Um, I could show you how to do that real fast if you wanna see that, but and um, so we started out with a blank playground and we both both built, built sorry, I can't talk, <laughs> fortresses. And then, um, and he built this huge wall in between. <laughs> and then I just put math questions, different math questions he's working on, on a wall. And if he gets it right, he gets to knock down two of the blocks, you know, in the wall. Um, to try to get to my fortress and find we've we've hidden objects in our fortresses. So he has to try to find them. So if he misses the question, then I get to knock down two of the blocks of his. <laughs> so it can be as simple as that. Um, but there's so many different things that you can do. And um, I went into this Dylan fortress before and that wasn't it. So I just wanted to see if I could find it. But anyway, so so yeah, there's a there's endless 
ways that you can do this. And uh, it's, it is so fun to build just like, <laughs> just like people are saying, you can, you can get into hours and hours of building and on your own time. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. So, so does anybody have any questions about anything? All right, let me go through the chat. I think there's a good number of questions. Okay. All right. Um, I might just read them in, well, let me try to go back a little bit because there's a lot of questions actually. Okay. Um, so there's some that we didn't, they were probably from the, yeah, from the Wendy's demo. Oh, why is my Zoom completely bugged out here? Um, put small videos. I have my students who would love this. How long did it take to make that game? Is there a place we can get different already made playgrounds? Uh, yeah, so I bet the, I think what uh, what Dina was showing here is uh, something she got from the marketplace. And I'll show that in the, just a few minutes, how to do that. And I think she just modified it for her uh, use case. So once you get something from a template or a game for the marketplace, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. You can change it. Um, to to for your students. Um, any plans for being able to use the co-browser in Playground? Patty asks. Uh, it's on the roadmap. <laughs> You're not yet. There's a lot of people asking for this, so I got to figure out how to do that. Um, would you reuse this game in every class, but change the material? Somebody asks. You could do that. Um, so. <laughs> If you're like me, when you see the playgrounds, you're going to want all of them. <laughs> um, I don't have all of them, but I do have probably seven or eight at least. <laughs> and um, so it's just fun because you see them and you're just like, you know, there's so many great ideas from all of the different tutors. That's one of the things that I love so much about uh, Koala Go is that we're all helping each other with ideas of teaching and, um, you know, just building these amazing playgrounds. Um, and really, even in Marketplace, the playgrounds are a very reasonable price. There's a lot of them for just 10 or $15. There's a few that are 25, but they're all, um, you know, they're all real reasonable prices and they're really amazing. So you're probably going to want to use more than just one. But if you wanted to, you could just use one playground and you could, you know, you can always change uh the great thing too is you can change all the images. So like in the aquarium that playground that I made, if you wanted to turn that whole thing into a museum instead, you know, you could, all you do is delete the pictures and put in your own images. So you can have whatever you want to teach about in there. So, yeah. Thank you. Let's see what else we got. Um... Uh, somebody was asking, and, and Wendy kindly answered, I just want to pick up on this. What are the most amount of students? So I'm trying to read this. What are the most amounts of students that you've had in the playground at one time so that it doesn't become too chaotic? Uh, Wendy says, I have only had three, but um, was in a workshop with many teachers. Who has who has had a class with more than three students in playground here? I wonder. Maybe four or five. I've heard multiple teachers teach with like four or five, six students. Um, I think focus mode is essential. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I have a question that, about that, actually. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Dina. So, and I, I didn't think of this till just now, but so when you use focus mode um, mm -hmm. and you have multiple students like that, it does focus all of them Absolutely. on that at the same time, right? Okay. Absolutely. I just want to make sure because I've never tried that before. Mm -hmm. um, but I did want to mention focus mode because yeah it is the greatest tool because of the fact that you know understandably so many people worry about what if the kids just off running around the playground yep and at any moment in time you can make them <laughs> stop <laughs> you can make yep. them see you know only what you want them to see and they can't move around the playground and so you know it's brilliant it's great so so i can focus my student which is what i've been doing can I ask them to focus and use, because can I ask them, go and find the, the blackboard or go and find the whiteboard and now focus on it. And so then would I see what they're seeing or no? Um, yeah, so focus tool is really a tool that we built for the teacher only uh, at the moment, at least. 
Okay. Um, so it's the purpose was, yeah, like your student is distracted or they can't find what you're trying to show them or whatever. Just focus on it and that's it. Um, yeah, for that use case where you would want your student to go find a board, I think you could just like have them find the board and when they found it, yeah. if you want, you can focus on it. Yeah, that's that. what I've been doing for. Thanks. Yeah. It's a good question though. That would be a good way though for um, if you're teaching, you know, a kid about directions. If they yep. go find something and then they have to give you the directions to oh, come yeah. to where they are. <laughs> take a left, really take a right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ina. This was, again, really great. Um, and there might be other questions to answer. I'm not sure. Um, why do you die when you jump into the sea? Is that just part of the fun? So you don't really die. There's no dying, Koala, right? <laughs> Somebody asked that um, in a previous webinar. And you, you just like, you go in the water and then you, the, the technical word is respawn, <laughs> um, but you reappear at the starting point of your playground. So there's like a default starting point, but you can also set it to whatever you want. I can show that as well. If you want the starting point to be in a specific place, you can you can set that up. And there, there um, is, sorry, I keep talking, but there please, is please. actually, <laughs> there is actually a an option in the marketplace. Somebody built, I'm trying to remember what she called it. <laughs> she, uh, non-hazardous and <laughs> that's not oh, yeah. what it's called, but something like that <laughs> um, playground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah where she where she made it so that there's like fence all around and stuff so you can't fall into the ocean <laughs> <laughs> so if you so if you really wanted to <laughs> make sure they don't fall into the ocean you could try that playground <laughs> i think it's a really yeah. strain to build that i, I, I want to point out it's a very cool playground but there's absolutely no risk of injury in in koalas yeah. <laughs> want to make that clear um very cool. Thank you so much, Dina. This was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess like we can, um, I can probably take over now and sh answer the uh, unanswered questions that we've had so far. And maybe if you have more questions, I would be more than happy to also answer those. But maybe we can start with, um, there was a lot of questions around, how do I get these really cool templates? How do I use them for myself? So I can show this if you're interested. Um, let me share my screen. Let me make sure that this is going to work. OK, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Awesome. OK, yeah. so um, you, for some of you that are, maybe are just getting started, uh, one thing to understand, let me close this. Here we go. One thing to understand is um, this concept of activities. And I, 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 heard, I saw some questions around, uh, you know, how do I put a template in an activity? And like, how do I open a playground? And, and it's kind of confusing uh, at first, but I'm gonna explain it and hopefully this will be clear. So essentially um, what we call an activity. So if you wanna see all your activities, there's two ways to do it. You can click on the menu, click on my activities and here you can, you'll see all the activities that you have on your account. Uh, if you wanna see the activity that you're currently on, currently have open right now, it's that, whatever is in this box here is what you have currently open right now. Uh, you can also just click on this and it'll show you other activities that are in your account. So it's kind of a shortcut. But um, so an activity is essentially just the slide deck that, of the slides that you have on your whiteboard. So here I have, a, turns out I have 106 slides on my whiteboard. I can even see them all by clicking on the little uh, mosaic button top. So I have 106 slides in my whiteboard, all of them together, are associated with the activity, okay? So if I go to a different activity, I would expect to have different slides on my whiteboard. But the activity not only contains the slides of my whiteboard, but it also contains whatever is in my playground. So if I go to playground here, let's check it out. This, whatever's in this playground is associated with that activity that I have open right now, okay? So if I go to a different activity, I'm going to have a different playground. Hopefully that's clear. If there's any question around this, like we're more than happy to answer that. It's important to understand that so I can show the marketplace and everything else. 
So you can see I'm still in Koala Bear Starters, same thing that I was in when I had the whiteboard and my 106 slides open, right? And this is the playground that I have associated with this activity. If I go to a different activity, let's say I go to, I'll go to my, to this one, it's going to load a whole different playground. Um, you can see here that it's a different playground. Okay. All right. So now, what if, you know, obviously most of us don't have time to build these amazing playgrounds that we've seen. Um, and uh, maybe you're also looking for inspiration. Maybe, um, maybe you want to get something that's already made. I think a lot of you were asking this. So you can actually click on, when you click on your activities, so whether you go through here or through this button, my activities, you'll have this button at the top left that says marketplace. So you can click on that. And that'll take you to our marketplace of activities. Now, when you first open the marketplace of acti activities, you'll see that it's kind of all jumbled up. There's a mix between whiteboard slides activities, a playground activities, and there are even activities that have both some slides and some playground stuff all together. Um, so it's kind of messy. it's kind of uh, mixed together. If you want to filter, for example, just playground, you can just click on to under format over here, click on playground. And now you're just seeing uh, the activities that have a playground component to them that are that are gonna be of interest for you. So obviously we have more filters like grades, price, subject, et cetera. Um, but I would recommend just browsing through them. Um, a lot of them are just, sometimes they can be a little bit mislabeled. So it's worth just browsing through them. <laughs> um, so for example, uh, let's say, um, I don't know, trying to find one that I already own, but um, I see an activity that I like. I think I already own this one. So I click on open. And if you already own it, if you already paid for it in the past, it just copies as a new activity on your account. This is what's happening right now. If you don't own it, you just have to you buy it. And when you buy it, the money, 85% of the money goes to the creator. So this will go to Emily. Um, so it's also a great way to support teachers, by the way. Um, and it'll copy and it'll be in your account for you to use. Once it's in your account, I'm going to show this. Um, you'll obviously have the base template, which is in this case, Black Pearl Pirate Ship. You can see it at the top right. I can even see it in my activities. It says Black Pearl Pirate Ship, current activity. But I might not want to mess up the original template or the original lesson, I might want to make a copy of it so that I can use it with my students. For example, I might even want to make one copy per student, right? So in order to do this, you can click over here again and find where the Black Pearl Pirate Ship template is or whatever activity you got from the marketplace. You can click the three dots and say duplicate. Let it do its work. Um, it's a little bit slow. We're actually working on making this much faster because <laughs> uh, for some reason it's slow. So once it's copied, you can, uh, I'll show this, you can use it with your student. You can destroy it completely. You can change it entirely. It's not a big deal. You'll still have the original one. And even if you do mess up the original one, it's not a big deal either because you can always go back to the marketplace and click open on the uh, activity that you already purchased and you won't have to buy it again if that makes sense. Okay, enough talking, do I have, do I have questions, Zav? So there was a question from Cynthia about getting receipts for your, your um, marketplace purchases for tax reasons. Yeah, we don't, oh, have, yeah. we don't yet have this, this, so you would need to reach out to us in the 24 seven live support and we will gladly email you your receipts. Sorry about this, we need to, we need to put this on the roadmap. Um, Any other questions? Uh, yes, from Katie. For creators, it would be nice to see what other teachers who don't want to create or don't have time to create would like. So maybe a suggestion box of sorts where creators can see what is wanted and choose to help create that playground. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think that we have this already. I'm trying to think. Um... I know we don't that's have a, a suggestion box. That's an excellent idea. I actually yeah. put um, 
So for those who don't know on Facebook, there's a koala group. Um, koala, what is it called? Koala teachers. <laughs> koala teachers family. Koala teachers family. Um, and so I highly recommend joining that. But yeah, I had put a post in there before asking what grade level people teach, you know, what subject and things like that to try to get ideas to, to gear my playgrounds toward that. And not a lot of people answered, unfortunately. So it would be great if there would be a place that they could do that. Yeah. Got it. Yep. That's a very good point. Um, but maybe we need to have like an official like, yeah, place. place here so that people can like submit ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I think that'd be better. Cause on Facebook things tend to get lost sometimes. Definitely. And maybe you're off Facebook for a few days and you just don't see all the posts. But if it's yep. on the like official site, like on the marketplace or anywhere, like then the creators can see it and people can submit. And then if you're a creator, if you're willing to take the time to create um, that playground for someone, you can see all the details that they want and see if you can make it for them. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think that's a really good feature request, actually. Yeah. Um, and, and there's yeah, a question, Ben, for you. So, so each student is a different activity e.g name your activities after each student so you, that's up to you um i think that's the pattern that a lot of teachers are actually following which is to have one activity per student there's a couple corner cases that i've heard where they have one activity per group of students for example that they often like work together um but yeah the typical use case is i have one activity for each of my students and i have one activity for each of my templates so an activity is really just a, an umbrella term to uh, say a lesson, a template, or sort of the progress that I have with a student, my you know classroom that I have with a student. Hopefully that I do the that totally differently. Okay, so I, there's different people. My yeah. activities are totally based on what skill I'm trying to teach them, mm -hmm. so that then I can pull up that skill anytime I want with any student. Interesting. Yeah. But do you do you reset it after you're done with that student? How do you manage that? Oh, I I develop the activity and then I copy it and I name it for the student that I'm going to use it for next. Okay. But the original name is actually what the skill is. Gotcha. Okay. So so yeah. So there's you can really do whatever you feel well you want and what feels best for you. Um, it's it's really up to you. We, we didn't want to impose a um a workflow, so it's it's really what you decide to do. Um, if you do need it, I know, I know there's like some feature requests uh, around improving this, like having folders um, <laughs> and things like that. So if you have like ideas of how to how we can support your workflow better, let us know and we'll we'll work through it. Um, cool. Yeah, I didn't finish my demo earlier, sorry. Um, but so I have my original Black Pearl Pirate Chip. I duplicated it and I can just rename it to, you know, uh, Black Pearl Pirate Chip with, uh, sorry, Black Pearl Pirate Chip with, um, say, with uh, with Xavier. That, that would be if my Xavier was my student, obviously. And so it renames over here. Um, and then once I have this, I can look up you know, Xavier, for example, and I have all of the um, activities that have uh, started with Xavier, including his wedding brainstorm that he's not supposed to see. So I'll remove that. Um, so let's say, Ben, we're in a class uh, right now, in an ongoing yep. class. How do you switch between activities while the tutoring session is happening? Yeah, it's a very good question. So there's not much you need to do. Like, let's say I'm with a student right now and I'm, do I'm working on this activity. You don't have to have them leave and come back or anything like that. You just literally click over here, select a different activity. Like I have this new playground one, not very interesting, I think, but um, like that, right? And my students still with me the whole time. I, I'm not losing them. I can go to the playground. They're still with me, right? Um, so at any time you can just switch activities just by clicking on the top right and picking a different activity. And you don't have to be in a whiteboard to change activities. You can also change activities directly from Playground. You really never really have to leave Playground if you just want to stay in Playground. Rita, does that answer your question? Yes? Excellent. 
Um, and then, hey, ben, yeah. sorry, Ben, could you? Sorry, um, could you also show them? Because I think a lot of times, uh, I think a lot of times people think that they have to do playground or whiteboard or the shared screen. When right. in a whole in a whole lesson, you could use all three of those. So yeah, definitely. I just wondered if you could show them the shared screen also. Absolutely. So uh, let me turn off my camera and zoom over here. Um, so when you're uh, in your classroom like this and you invite a student, um, at the top left, you'll see this button that says share screen. You can click on this and then just share your screen with your student. You have an option between your Chrome tab, a specific window, or your entire screen, whatever you prefer. So that's how you would share your screen. And again, I never had to have my student do anything for me to be able to do that. They're still with me in the room. They, they're just waiting for me to do that, basically. Um, at any point, I can also go to the code browser. If you're not familiar with that, uh, it's this button on the bottom right. So you can jump in the code browser, do a part of your lesson in the code browser, play a game in the code browser, and at, at any point, jump out and head over to Playground. So you can really, a lot of teachers do that. A lot of teachers just switch between browser and whiteboard and playground and just like sometimes like multiple times per session. And it should be pretty quick like that. So that's uh, the question. <laughs> ben, there's an yep. interesting comment from Deborah. She says, I have a student enthusiastically creating a playground for you sank my battleship. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> battleship, battleships on one side, on one side and spaceships on the other. He's been working wow. hard and would like to share it. He's quite bright and I can't quite envision where he is going with this, but if it worked <laughs> out well, as is likely good, how could he share it? Thanks for the news, guys. So you would share it for him, I guess. Um, so you would, um, the way that you, by the way, the way that you, by sharing, I'm assuming you mean publish it to the marketplace. I think that's this... what he's thinking. Yeah. Okay. So you could share it for him. Um, I guess like <laughs> you would have to like maybe set up um, an account with like you obviously for the it's money for you to, to get into his account, you would probably have to either you cash in the money and then send it to him or set it up with his mom or something. Um, but yeah, you click here, right? And then say publish activity. Okay. And then you get a little form to uh, publish your activity. Terrific. And that's how you publish something. So anybody's welcome, of course, to publish an activity to the marketplace. Um, we it do have got a... him so excited about learning and coming. He can't wait till we finish the lesson so we can go work. And we spend about 15 minutes. I go overtime. Per session. He's having so much fun. It's great. It's fantastic. I love hearing that. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, I do. I do, too. We always go at least 15 minutes. And it, it doesn't bother me at all because we're both having fun. <laughs> I think so, that's a future a future uh, employee for Ben. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but actually, uh, on the topic of how to teach in playground and who I have to teach in playground, I think a lot of people maybe feel a bit of anxiety around having to learn this tool. And it's like, oh, I have to learn a video game to start teaching. Well, the, the good news is that you really don't, right? So you really don't have to, well, you don't have to use Playground at all. If you want to use a whiteboard and co-browser, I mean, we have lots of teachers that use just do whiteboard co-browser and that's totally fine. Um, and maybe you can use, at the beginning, you'll use Playground sort of as a reward. And maybe at the end of the lesson, you do five minutes of, um, of you just let them do whatever they want, <laughs> maybe. Um, but at some point, I think you'll discover that, especially because we're adding more and more tools, you'll discover that, you can do a lot in Playground and it's a lot more um, immersive and engaging than just being on the whiteboard potentially. Um, and so it's a, it's a way to sort of trick your student's brain to make them think they're in a game, but really they're, they're learning something. They're really, they're really in your class. Um, so- I found um, like one of yeah. the easiest things, um, just even just using one of the um, go-to, uh, um, one of the set playgrounds, like the summer playground or the winter playground or mm -hmm. the ones that are like default, um, yep. just kind of using those as a starting point. And yep. so like this one, for example. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, like exactly. And just putting images of like the textbook you're using or something. Like I'm doing that with two of my girls right now. And um, like before, um, they kind of didn't like just doing the textbook by themselves, but because we're in the playground now, 
yeah. they enjoyed a lot more just simply just by being in the playground. You know, it's yeah, just, it's, it's just the, the fact of being in a in a three D gamey world makes them already happy, or just that, right? Mm -hmm. Is that is that what you okay? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like even if you don't want to build your own playground or you don't have like the time or you you don't really know what to do. I mean, mm -hmm. we already have like these default playgrounds where yep. you don't have to buy anything and you can just insert like the worksheets or the textbook pages and it just gets them a little bit more excited mm -hmm. to do the lesson because it's different than on the whiteboard because now they, especially now that they can write and they can use like the sticky notes and it's really more interactive, um, this... I think lowers the anxiety for if you're just starting out. Absolutely. And you just want yeah. to introduce your kids as well. So that's actually a great place to start, you guys. Um, I love that suggestion, Katie. So if you're not so confident about Playground and maybe you want to have them read a story or have them like maybe do a, a, a simple worksheet, you really don't have to go crazy and like build this amazing Playground or anything like that. You can just start by, I'm going to show this process. Uh, I'm gonna lead. So you can start with the default playground, which is going to be this one, by the way. If you don't like the, the winter playground, uh, we have an equivalent that's summer. So you're going to click on the three uh, lines at the top right, click on reset playground. And over here, you can pick either the winter classroom or the summer classroom. If you prefer the summer classroom, uh, you can click on this, say yes, reset it. And it will load the summer classroom. Just like that. And now you have the same classroom, but summer version. Again, I didn't do anything, right? I just clicked two buttons. That's all. I didn't have to create some complicated stuff. And then, yeah, I love this first step, Katie. So maybe what you want to do is click on this button, like Wendy was showing earlier, uh, this box with the things spilling out of it. Um, click on your image library. And over here, you might want to go and select from your computer an image of a worksheet or an image of a story or something like that, right? Something that you want your student to, maybe this part of your class already, right? Uh, and you want your student to read or you want your student to um, to solve, maybe if it's an exercise. Um, so let me try to find something interesting here. I don't know if I have that many interesting things on my computer, but um, I should always have something ready though. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I think I have in my images, I probably have something cool. Um, student let me see uh well i have this while one well you're looking for that yeah i, go for I it. just want to mention too that okay so just just a few months ago when i i was using qual 3d before this um but you didn't do any building in qual 3d you know you yeah. couldn't it was it was just a 3d classroom that was already made for you it was totally cute but um <clears throat> but no building or anything so i mean this is this is like maybe four or five months ago that um, I switched over to Koala Go, uh -huh. was not happy that they were getting rid of Koala 3D. And I was thinking, I don't understand why this program is better, you know? <laughs> and now it's crazy because, you know, I never even played Minecraft in my life. I, you know, I've seen my nephew play it, that's it. Um, I didn't know how to put one block on top of another, you know, <laughs> in, in playground, um, you know, just several weeks ago. And now I'm building playgrounds and selling them in the marketplace. I mean, it's it's ridiculously easy. And and so, you know, and there's tutoring, there's videos, tutorial videos on it. Um, I have one that I just put out actually that's about building in the playground. Um, but it's it's so easy to learn. I didn't think that I would be, you know, able to do it, but it was it's a lot easier than you think. Looks complex, but it's not. So <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, that's Hopefully that reduces a little bit of the anxiety. So for example, this is a, I just grabbed some random file that I had on my computer, but you could do that obviously with files that are not random. <laughs> uh, so you can grab an image from your computer and just like plop it into Playground like I did. So once you've selected it from your computer, it'll show up in your library at the bottom. And then you, in order to put it in the classroom, you just click on it and then click wherever you want it to be. And it'll just appear like that. And in the beginning, it'll be kind of, kind of small. And I think Wendy showed this a couple of times already, but you can click the size button over here to make it bigger. You can also um, yeah, click for a little while and it'll be a little bit larger and readable. Um, and maybe like just 
just maybe have them focus on it for a little bit, <laughs> just to read whatever they need to do or, you know, self the exercise. I don't know what, you, what it's going to be about, but um, try it out. Uh, and I'm curious to hear about how it goes for you guys. Um, okay, do we have any more questions? How, what is the anxiety yeah. level, especially for people that haven't really started or tried? How do you feel right now? Do you feel a bit better? Do you still feel confused? I'm, I'm wondering. I'm a little bit confused, but okay. it's very good. Very, very good. I like it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm more interested in the part where you're confused. Can we? Do you mind if we expand a little bit on that? What part um, is... Go ahead. For me, um, I love kids. So this yep. is awesome for kids, especially if they can design or help you build and as you said earlier, and to paste your lessons on the boards and stuff, it's very nice. But what about adults? Mm -hmm. What about adults? We cannot use a playground like this. Do you have something? Should we build something for us for ourselves for adults or? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Work? Well, it really depends on what you're teaching, I guess, and what um, that, you know what what um yeah what you want to do with those adults i mean a great way to work with adults is to use the whiteboard <laughs> I know. So you, or the co-browser for that matter like you can yes. go to interactive websites google slides uh whatever that you would normally do i'm sorry please go ahead oh it's okay <laughs> no. um so i just had you know a couple ideas here so please so like for example with with the aquarium playground that i built um, using the, I use, you know, clip art in a lot of it, but I also use all those real images as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it may not be that you're teaching them about marine life or whatever, but um, whatever you are teaching the adults about, you can use the real pictures in the playground instead of using clip art. And that would really make it more geared to adults. Mm -hmm. Also, Emily has a, a playground that's on anatomy and it is amazing. It does have a lot of clip art in it, but it is, it's incredible. I mean, it looks like something that a college student in an anatomy class would use, you know, to learn anatomy. So I don't have that one, so I can't show you, but I was going to, I was going to ask you, Ben, if you could show it to her. Um, so there are some, you know, and I think there will be more playgrounds also in the marketplace. There'll be more geared towards uh, teaching adults soon too. So yeah, because yeah, thank you. especially if I cannot speak English at all and you mm -hmm. need to try to understand their accent, to understand them, them, and then I always say start with phonics. It's a basic thing. So that yeah. they can know how to pronounce each letter, which letter is still. Um, then maybe if you can make it interesting, adult-like, like find out, let's say it's a lady, find out her interests and according to her interests, do phonics or do reading or whatever. I just thought. You, so we, we do have a few creators that have built some phonics playgrounds. Um, so I'm gonna look, you can look for phonics on the marketplace there. And there's a couple that are really great. Um, the one with uh, one that Katie built is great. Uh, and she maybe can talk about it more. Emily has a few of course that are that are really cool. Um, and I don't know if that answers the question really, but the marketplace is getting more and more fleshed up. People are just creating like left and right, really cool content. So I would check it out. Um, I, I think that maybe what you're, I'm not sure if I understand the, the question correctly. Do you mean, are you asking like, I need content to teach phonics or are you asking, does um, the platform I, allow teach phonics? Yeah. Um, what I ask actually is can is is there on the marketplace or wherever um like 3d material that mm -hmm. we can build according to an adult let's say for phonics yep. or yep. whatever do you uh, katie did you want to comment on your phonics garden so my phonics phonics. garden um i'm not sure if it would because i don't teach adults i teach um young children um, ages four to eight. Um, so it is geared towards younger learners. So I'm not, sh 
I'm not sure how you teach an adult phonics. I'm not sure if that would. Um, that would work. If that would work, because that's, um, it's like matching the the letter sounds and doing like CVC and um, going through like the different sounds. So I'm not sure if it would be best for adult learning. I'm not yeah. familiar with adult le learning English. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, my, sorry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Because most of my um, students is kids, but now mm -hmm. all of a sudden, all these adults pop up. Now they want something interesting because they, they work during the day. So very I am hours for me in South Africa. I had to teach them, the adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they're already tired from working everything. Now I want to make it interesting for them by creating something or get pieces here and there everywhere here on Koala to create something that can make it more adult. Yep. Um, and for them, let's say the lady likes makeup, fashion. Then yeah. you can go and create something about that with phonics in or whatever. You know what? That makes me, I think, I don't know if that answers the question perfectly, but Emily has a really cool classroom or playground, sorry, where she essentially recreated like a whole uh, a, a house Okay, with uh, lots of different rooms that are themed. Um, so she has, for example, like bathroom and kitchen and office, and she even has like a whole area outside with like trash and stuff. Yeah. So this might be a good place for just like right, words of uh, every day, right? Um, so the, I, 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 and I, Emily's not here to to explain this or to comment okay. on that, but. This might be a good place to actually explore. At least that's what I would do. I guess if I'm not an ESL teacher by any means, but I that's what I would probably look into. One of these playgrounds that have like more of a everyday scene and and take them through an everyday situation uh, where you speak English. I just thought we can make something interesting according to the students' absolutely hobbies and, and all, create <laughs> something like a place or a. Yeah, you know, like a beauty salon with this and this, but it's like whatever the lesson is about, or mm -hmm. if it's a if it is a, a male, maybe he's in politics or he's a lawyer or whatever. Then you create something according to that, or the interest that got fishing, maybe you know things like that, but more adult. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Absolutely, I completely understand. So, yes. for all the creators out there. There is a need for adult <laughs> playgrounds, just so you know. <laughs> I I'll start working on one as soon as I can. <laughs> I'm taking that, yeah. Because I'm used I'm, to kids. I'm used to kids. Yeah. It's so easy to be a, a clown, really. It's yeah, so yeah, of course. Yeah. Easy of course. Because I like it's, it. it's harder with adults. I get it. Yeah. Of course, because you still have to talk with your eyes, your hands, your face, but in yep. a proper way, in a more business-like way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. All right, I want to give the opportunity for other people to ask other questions. So uh, is there any other questions Zav, that I that I missed? I would that we have like to, may I Please make go. just a quick comment? Oh, yes, Deanna. of course, Deborah, of course, of course. Um, I, I got the aquarium from you and mm -hmm. we've used it more as Thank you. <laughs> fun and you can, the kids will build their lead is mm -hmm. what I found because we just said, oh, you know what? Friday, I went to the National Aquarium in Baltimore. So we're going to go look at this aquarium and let's go in. And mm -hmm. the student just took the lead for me. We went oh, in and we cool. said, oh, well, look, here's a desk. He says, we have to buy your tickets. And I said, well, well, how are we going to, who's going to sell the ticket? He said, oh, I am, I am. And he went back and I said, I'd like one adult ticket, please. And he said, that will be eight <laughs> gems. So he earned himself <laughs> gems while we were playing in the playground. They mm -hmm. will find a way, and I would imagine this would be true of adults too. You get yeah. in there, they'll show you a way. They they, they will have a great time, and then whether mm -hmm. it's the equipment, yeah, there are the tickets. So well, we got behind the counter, and then we went across okay. the way, and we took our picture in front of the photo wall there. And, <laughs> you know, nice. it was lots of, lots of fun. It was yeah. Really so I think that kind of getting out there and letting the kids see it mm -hmm. will help you find a way too. Yeah, yeah thank thanks you, for Deanna. thanks for sharing that. That's awesome to hear how you're using it. And I, that's the one of the things I was thinking too is that you know a lot of adults. Okay, my parents are in their seventies, and and 
they haven't ever seen anything like this because it's the younger kids who are used to playing video games that are like this. So a lot of adults have never seen anything like this and they're they're amazed by it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, again, it's a thing where, yeah, to gear it more towards adults, you can use, you know, more real pictures than clip art pictures, yeah. you know, like you were talking about with a, with a beauty salon or whatever, you could totally do that with, you know, I, I mean, I have all these ideas of how to make that, you know, but you could totally build that and, and put the real pictures in there. I mean, you could have people sitting in seats and you could have real people because you can actually put, I've put images of my nieces sitting in chairs in playgrounds before. So, you know, so you can even put those adults in <laughs> the playground. So yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of things that you can do. Wow. And yeah, if, you know, if people need some kind of playground that, you know, I'm happy to build it. So <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for sharing that, Deborah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Any other questions? So, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes, if I may. Um, I'm totally new to this. I only found out about it last week, but very much interested. The other thing is I've been teaching for almost 30 years, never played a video game in my life. So it sounds kind of difficult to me. I am now trying to start an online tutoring business. And I am wondering if now will be the right time for me to jump into this. It's like, okay, I guess what I'm getting at is how difficult will it be for a newcomer who has never played a video game before, don't know Mm -hmm. anything about it, just know about teaching, and that's about it. Um, Balancing that with also starting online. I taught online before, but of course, just using um, Zoom. But I want to get my children more interesting because what I found while I was in China a few years ago, especially during the lockdown, doing online tutoring is that it can become very boring. Yeah. And so when I found this out about this site, I was like, yeah, but then can I do this? So how realistic it is for a newbie like me? So maybe I, oh, 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 please, please go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. Hi, Laverne. Um, She actually attended the um, demo that I did. And Laverne, something that I will tell you is that because you are just getting started, this to me would be an ideal time to get acclimated to the platform um, so that you're not like, so, so that you're not you know, having to do a lot of heavy lifting while you're, you know, learning it, learning it while you're also doing instruction. Something that to, that I think you can think of is, as someone pointed out, you could start with just the whiteboard. And then, you know, as you're building your confidence and your knowledge about the shared browser, I mean, the co-browser, I keep saying shared, the co-browser, the playground, then that will come more because you'll be intrigued. You'll be like, I want to see what this is like. And then you'll notice, you'll pick up on the energy of your of your students and you'll want to, to, to just take it up another notch. And so you'll want to immerse them in the playground. So I think, I personally think that now is a time to get in here and start just trying it out. It it will amaze you because I like, like I think you've exp- expressed as well as I think I heard someone else say, um, maybe Deanna, I, my son has been doing Minecraft for years and has begged me to do Minecraft. And I looked at it and I got so confused. This here made it so much easier for me to understand. I also I also deal with vertigo sometimes and I thought that would be an issue for me and it's not. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you with those words. And, you know, again, I am more than willing to do kind of like a work, a co-working time um, for other people who might want to just feel, you know, that you have camaraderie and you have people who want to, you know, we, we work in, we'll be working on our own projects, but in the same, at the same time, we can be kind of doing a co-working. I'm willing to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. That's, that's I excellent. had zero. I had <laughs> zero experience doing Minecraft. I had heard of it. I'd never been in it. Never seen it. Never done it. 
and I have jumped right in. Um, I don't create them, the classrooms, but I do go in and alter them to fit my students. And it has been the easiest thing. The way that it has been created is so user-friendly. The biggest thing is learning how to someone just ask, how do you change your PDFs into images? Um, and I just put a link, PDF to PNG, and then you load them in and it's it's easy. You will absolutely love it. Like I said, I had zero experience and I rely primarily on Playground now to do most of my classes. Thank well, you. It sounds you like agree with uh, Cynthia, because yeah. um, I also started out knowing nothing. I've never played games. I'm not a gamer, was not into Minecraft or anything. So I also started with just using the whiteboard and then I slowly moved over to using whiteboard and co-browser. And then I started just letting my kids just go into the playground just, just to play, not to do any like lessons or anything, just to kind of see what they did. Um, and then I got a little bit more um, confident in it and I started creating my own playgrounds and um, just using what was there to make lessons. And so I used all three now. So just take it at your own pace and use your kids' energies and like see what they do because your kids can actually teach you a lot as well. Um, I learned every day some new things from my kids that I didn't think of. Yeah, I, honestly, the hardest the hardest part of getting started with Koala Go, I think, in Playground is jumping up the stairs. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's, everybody seems to struggle with that. And I struggled with that the first week um, because I don't know, I, I guess it's just that you have to kind of maneuver your avatar so that it's kind of, facing the stairs straight on in order, you know, before you start jumping with the space bar. And honestly, honestly, once you get that down, you're <laughs> everything else is a whole is a whole lot easier. There's so many, there's a tutorials page on the Koala Go website um, that has, you know, a bunch of videos that are just real short about how to do specific things. So if you're having a hard time with something, just go to one of those tutorials on that page. And you know, most of those videos are two or three minutes or less. Um, so, you know, any anything that you're having a hard time with, it's really easy to to be able to figure out the answer really quickly. And it, that helps a lot too. But it really isn't as difficult as it seems. <laughs> okay. It's difficult for me to even move the avatar. <laughs> um, yeah, if I can add Laverne, uh, you know, of course uh, it was said before, but I think 90% 90, 90 of Koala users today had never played a video game in their life before. So don't be, don't be scared about this. But also, and maybe Ben, you can show this. Um, we, have, we have a small team that's available 24 seven and we're really happy to provide uh, individual training for you if you want. So uh, Ben, can you take it from here? Yeah, for sure. So I guess, yeah. Um, the button that's going to be the most helpful button in your whole life is that button in the bottom right that says 24-7 with a little koala and headphones like this. Uh, we offer, like Debbie said, we offer 24-7 live help with real people. We'll even jump into your classroom if you need like live, like one-on-one -on -one training or if you need somebody to solve your problem for you. Um, so you just click on that button, say, hello, I need help jumping up the stairs upstairs um i don't play video games and this is hard for me i i, I haven't warned whoever's on duty right now <laughs> i haven't warned them about this let's see how they react it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting <laughs> um, one thing that is incredible is honestly uh, these guys are the best customer service of any company ever <laughs> by far i mean there's so many companies that i have use chat on and had to wait 20 minutes for somebody to get on. These guys are on every single time and I've used it a lot, every single oh. time in in 30 seconds and they totally will do agree. anything for you. <laughs> it's incredible. They're I always, totally I don't agree. know how they keep up with it. <laughs> These so guys Danny. never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're, we have a good team that's all over the world. So we're able to cover all 24 seven um except u.s holidays that's the only time of year that we're not gonna we're not available but it's a it's only 10 days out of the year so um yeah 
we're way past time. If there's any other questions, I'm more than happy to stay and answer them. I have Otherwise, a question. We can... Yeah, go ahead, uh, Yeah. Was it helpful, this format where a teacher shares their screen and gives a concrete example of, of how they teach in Playground? Yes. yes. Do we, should we organize more of those events? Yes, please. Definitely. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. And we will. I, I like the idea of highlighting some of the creators also, uh, because you mm -hmm. get to see how to maneuver through and kind of what their idea was when they were making it. And it gives you more ideas on how you can use it and put it into practice with your students. Absolutely. That's a Plus very it good gives point. them some advertisement, which is really great. <laughs> good point. Yes, I appreciate it a lot. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, I'm going to stop sharing here. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. I don't want to leave anybody uh, hanging. So um, there were there were a bunch of questions that I didn't take uh, because they were not related to playground and. Uh, oh, that's okay. We can still take them. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking. So I want to remind everyone, for those of you getting started with Koala, that every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, so that's noon Eastern time, we do a live training of Koala Go that starts from all the basics, whiteboard, co-browser activities, inviting students, etc. So um, I'm going to put the link in the chat. We're going to cover all the basics there. Um, and, but of course, if you have questions I, right now, uh, please feel free to ask them. And I was going to say, if you can't attend because the time is not convenient for you, you can always just text us in the help chat and we'll come give you a one-on-one -on -one training. That's no problem for us. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Reading the comments real fast. Um, okay. I think we've covered most questions. Again, like Xavier said, if you have questions, please reach out. More than happy to answer them. Otherwise, the recording should be available on our Facebook group. Is that correct, Zav? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to also put the link to our Facebook group in the chat. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a very useful resource. I would definitely recommend you guys join it if you can. Um, we have a very loose moderation policy. So people just post anything about Koala, obviously, but it's going to be, it could be positive and negatives. We don't censor anything <laughs> um so so it's all been yeah. positive so far <laughs> there's like there's a couple of like people saying oh i have this problem or whatever and it's great i'm like happy yeah. they they bring it up so yeah. um great okay thank and you everybody Xavier, thank you for I joining missed, thank you so much everyone. cows i miss the cows behind you are we ever going to be oh, able yeah. to have the cows in playground <laughs> yeah it's on, the, students, it's on the road map my students the, the cows <laughs> Cows are on the roadmap. Awesome. <laughs> they, are, they are mine. Right. I keep them for myself. Sorry. <laughs> well, I wondered Thanks, if we'd ever be able to have animals moving around like that and things in playgrounds. So I wasn't sure. That but... will come soon. That will come soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Right. Thank Bye, guys. You. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.